Hello and welcome to chapter 3, part 4. In this part, we'll be taking a look at the adding the key to the player so we can use the key to open the door. So the last part, we managed to get the key to disappear when we interacted with it. And we can make it so we interact with the door, but it doesn't actually do anything yet. What we're going to do in this part is make the key actually say to the player that they have it, and then when we get to the door, actually use it. So for this we need to go onto our player character. So find your player character. And in your player character we're going to add a variable to his variable list in the bottom left. So on the variable list click new variable on the plus icon. And we're going to name this one number of keys. And we're going to change that to an integer. An integer is a whole number which makes sense for this option of our variable because we can't have half a key. With integer selected, click compile and you'll see number of keys as default value of zero. That is correct, we don't want to start with any keys. We now close our player, go back to our key platform blueprint and this time when we destroy the component we're now going to tell it to add the key to the player. Now to accomplish this we need to first of all get the player character. So get player character and this player character reference is simply going to be a character object reference which is no good because that variable we placed was actually on a player character reference which is a child of character object. It may sound very confusing but I do have uh, further videos on inheritance if you want to check those out on my YouTube channel. But nonetheless this is a generic character. We need to cast it to a specific one. So drag it from your return value and search for cast to player character. That will transform that reference into a, a specific reference as a player character reference. And because the variable belongs to a player character and not just a general character, we can now access it. So as player character, we can now get number of keys and read it. So once we've got the number of keys, which at the start is zero, we're now going to tell it to increase it. So from there, we can do increment. And increment is just two plus signs, plus, plus. And you'll see increment int. Plug that into the other end of your cast for the success of the cast. So now, number of keys will actually go up. We're going to close this and go to our door. Now the door interact is going into a timeline. We're not going to do the timeline yet, we're going to do that in the next part. So what I'm going to do is just disconnect that for now. And first of all just get it so we check for a key and we remove a key. So on the interact we're going to test the, what, how many keys the player has. So very similarly we're going to get the player character. And then cast to the player character. As the player character, we can get number of keys. This is an integer, remember? So we're going to need to test if we actually have any keys. So what we're going to say is if this is greater than zero. And zero is the default value, so we can leave it as is. This will return true or false in the form of a boolean. So that will go into a branch. This branch will become true if we have a key. If we have a key, we want to tell that number of keys to decrement by one. So number of keys, I'm going to take out of here, minus minus and decrement int. Into true. And then finally, to test make sure it's all working, we'll do a print string. Okay. Now let's test that out and push play. I pick up a key and I go up to the door and it now should say hello because I have a key and I've used it and there you go. To recap the code there because we've done quite a bit, when we interact with the key platform we are getting the key and checking if it is still valid if we still have a key on that platform. If we do have the key still we can destroy the key from the key platform. We then send in the player character and casting that generic reference to a specific one. 
to get access to the number of keys. And return the number of keys to increment by one every time it interacts with it. Then on the door, when we interact with it, we're getting the player character and getting a, uh, a more specific reference to the player character, get the number of keys and checking whether or not it's greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, we're going to go forward and take away one of our keys using a decrement int. At the moment we're doing a print string, but that will then go onto our timeline. So let's drag our timeline onto the end here and swap it out for our print string. Going into play from start. And that's it for this part. Join us in part 5 where we work on our timeline and make the door animated to actually move out of the way. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next part. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.